In this video, we're going to talk about perspective and the size of the sun and how that relates to the appearance of a sun moving in a circle above a flat earth. This image here is taken from a video that I obtained with my Samsung phone of the sun. And I'm going to show you that this particular image here is not a true indication of the size of the sun. And therefore, it is unreliable to make an assessment of the size of the sun when you are not using a proper solar filter. When we do use a solar filter, it removes the sun flare and we are getting a true indication of the size of the sun itself. So any observations made of the size of the sun moving across the sky from sunrise to sunset are not reliable if you're not using a high quality solar filter. And to prove that point, I will show you the original video that was taken with the Samsung phone. Here it is. And as I was filming, I was adjusting the exposure level manually. And you can see that is resulting in the apparent size of the sun changing. Now it's not the size of the sun that is changing. It is just the appearance of the sun flare. We either see a lot of it, or if I reduce the exposure, we see smaller sun flare. Now, that can also occur naturally when the sun is setting due to the filtering of the sunlight through the atmosphere. As it gets lower to the horizon, it is being viewed through more atmosphere, and that results in a natural reduction in the size of the sun flare. And many flat earth channels are demonstrating this effect without using a correct solar filter and claiming that it is an indication of the sun shrinking as it sets. But as I will demonstrate in this video, that is not the case at all. And this next clip is from one of my previous videos where I show you the importance of using a solar filter to eliminate this sun flare. There is the sun without the filter. Then if we place the filter in front, you can see just how small the sun actually is. So that's now showing us the true size of the sun. Without the filter, you're only seeing the size of the sun flare, which is variable depending upon atmospheric conditions and the exposure level in the camera. If you're using a solar filter, you're going to see the true size of the sun. So for my own experiments and observations, I use different types of solar filters. This is an Orion glass filter, which just mounts onto the front of my telescope. For the cameras, the B700 and the P900, I use this type of filter, which just screws directly onto the front. This is a Marumi made in Japan filter. It's ND100,000, so it's a professional quality solar filter. And when you use that on the camera, it eliminates the sun flare so that you can see the true size of the sun correctly. I have different sizes, one for the P900, one for the B700, and a different one for one of my DSLR cameras. So there are several videos on YouTube made by Flat Earthers claiming that the sun is actually reducing in size as it sets. Unfortunately, these videos are made without using high quality solar filters, and therefore they are quite invalid. They are not accurately depicting the true size of the sun. In many cases, I reached out to these flat earthers and contacted them and offered to send them, at my cost, high quality solar filters to fit their cameras so that they could repeat the experiment properly and therefore obtain accurate results. I was very disappointed that in every case, the flat earther backpedaled, made an excuse not to accept the filter and just outright refused to repeat the experiment properly. Now, I find that very surprising because I'm often hearing from flat earthers that they are truth seekers, that they are researching the truth. And yet when I offer to assist them in making a real observation, all I get is resistance. So I have to say, unfortunately, I've given up on those particular flat earthers that I was previously communicating with because I no longer believe they are genuine researchers. A genuine researcher would have no hesitation to repeat the experiments properly 
using good quality equipment, especially when I'm sending it to them for free. So let's now take a look at perspective and anyone who has dealt with flat earthers long enough knows that this is one of their favorite words. A quick search on Google and through various dictionaries reveal the following definitions of perspective. The way that objects appear smaller when they are further away and the way parallel lines appear to meet each other at a point in the distance. So yeah, no problem there. I totally agree with that. The technique or process of representing on a plane or curved surface the spatial relation of objects as they might appear to the eye. Specifically, representation in a drawing or painting of parallel lines as converging in order to give the illusion of depth and distance. So that is the definition of perspective. And there are other definitions as the word perspective can apply in a different context to a person's particular point of view. But in terms of what we're looking at in this context, perspective is the art of parallel lines converging to create the illusion of depth. And you can see there the parallel lines, the top of the building, the bottom of the building, the telegraph poles, they are all reducing and shrinking in size as they move further away. This is a two dimensional picture, but due to the use of perspective, it gives the appearance that it is three dimensional. So perspective is showing us that as objects move further away, they will appear smaller. Let's take a look at that. And can we actually measure how much smaller they're going to appear as they move further away? We can use something called the angular size calculator to get an indication of the angular size of an object at different distances. And for the example, I'm going to use a one meter ball at five meters and a one meter ball at 10 meters. So it's the same size ball, but we're going to double the distance and have a look at how that affects the angular size. So firstly, let's have a look at a one meter ball at five meters and calculate. We have an angular size of 11.42 degrees. If we double the distance, the angular size becomes half. So what that is effectively saying is that if something moves twice as far away, it is going to appear half the size. And that is what perspective shows us. A one meter ball at five meters has an angular size of 11.4 degrees. A one meter ball at 10 meters has an angular size of 5.7 degrees. So that's half. Double the distance, we half the size. So perspective tells us that as things get further away, they're going to become smaller. So how does this relate to the size of the sun as it would appear on a flat earth if it was moving in a circle above that flat earth? Let's take the case of December when the sun is over the Tropic of Capricorn and at local noon in Rockhampton, which is right on the Tropic of Capricorn, the sun will be directly above. Now, if we then progress six hours, the sun moves 360 degrees in 24 hours. So in six hours, it's going to move 90 degrees around the earth. You can see very clearly that the distance of the sun from Rockhampton, Australia at local noon to 6 p.m. is significantly different. The sun is moving further away and therefore by the angular size calculator and perspective, it must be appearing smaller. Now, if we observe that in reality, if we observe the sun getting smaller in reality, well, that fits with the model. But what does our real observation show us? There is no change in the size of the sun at all as it moves from sunrise through local noon and to sunset. So that contradicts this flat earth model completely. The sun cannot be doing a circle above a flat earth and moving away from the observer 
because the size is not changing. And I'll demonstrate that now. So if you've been following my channel for a while, you'll know that I did a series of experiments with my telescopes using solar filters and tracking the sun all day with time-lapse videos like this. And this was the longest one where I did the time-lapse from 8.30 in the morning until sunset and confirmed that there is actually no change in the size of the sun. Anyone who does this experiment properly with a solar filter will confirm that the size of the sun does not change during the day. So there's a problem right away for the flat earth model with the sun doing circles above a flat earth because perspective requires the size of the sun to change. However, reality is not showing us that. The size of the sun is remaining constant all day. So this afternoon I filmed the sun with three different cameras and with one camera I did not use a solar filter and you can see just how large the sun flare appears on that camera. Now if we compare that to the same sunset with a camera with a solar filter you can see that we now are seeing the true size of the sun. If we progress towards the sunset without the filter you can see that the sun flare is actually reducing in size and that gives the illusion that the sun itself is shrinking but that's not the case at all it is simply the sun flare being filtered by more atmosphere as it gets closer to the horizon that results in the reduction in size of the sun flare looking at the same sunset with a filter you can see there's no change in the size of the sun. And I used a third camera zoomed in on the same sunset. You can see, again, there's no change in size. We had a bit of cloud. It was partially obscured for a while, but just as it's set, it is still the same size. there's the set itself. Okay, so we can see that when you're not using a solar filter, the size of the sun flare is changing dramatically, but that is not the true indication of the size of the sun. And I did the same thing yesterday, but this time with a sunrise, and this is with an unfiltered camera watching the sunrise. You can see as the clouds come over, they are illuminated from underneath before the sunrise and then when the sun rises initially it looks quite small but very quickly the sun flare increases to give the appearance that the sun is quite large if you look at that very same sunrise with a solar filter the result is quite different because now we're seeing the correct size of the sun and there it makes its first appearance and as it rises no change in the size so once again it is absolutely mandatory to use a high quality solar filter to get a true indication of the size of the sun and i'll play all those videos in sequence so you can see them in real time so to summarize Perspective requires objects to appear smaller the further away they are. On the flat earth, with the sun doing circles above the flat earth, as it moves from local noon to sunset, it should appear to get smaller. In reality, we do not observe that. Any flat earth channel showing you an unfiltered sunset is either being naive or deliberately deceptive. The only way to measure it correctly is by using a solar filter.